on? We're on. I think we're on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the weekend wellness show. This is Liam Zolo, your host. Where's the jingle? Huh? It didn't come up. We don't need a jingle today. We'll the jingle at the end. We'll jingle at the end. Anyway, welcome <laughs> down to the weekend wellness show. This is Liam Zolo, your host. I'm with my lovely co host, Sheena Alexandra. And we've got a special guest here, Ryan Whipper Clark, one of my old mates. And I look at him as a bit of a, uh, a mentor and a role model myself. So super excited to have Ryan down the show. Welcome, Ryan. Cheers, mate. Cheers. It's good to be here. Beautiful day for it. Yeah, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? We're very lucky to have this office down in uh, the lovely Bondi Beach, uh, Sydney, Australia. So we have to bring you down here. You are a Bondi Rescue star. As, as I say, you were an actor as well. Are you doing much acting these days? Nah, mate, not much. It's uh, only doing toy time, toy time, toy, st- to- toy, st- toy- story time say. for the kids. Yeah, there we That's go. The only acting that was, I'm doing at the moment. That was a tongue twister. I know. I couldn't even get that out. <laughs> but, uh, nah, I haven't done much of that for a while. But um, you know, still busy working down here as a lifeguard a bit, and then own a couple of gyms as well. So it uh, keeps me busy. with two kids and. It. Yeah, so you've got Life Cycle Fitness, and how, what's the other one? How do you say that one? Uh, the other one's Elab over in Maroubra, so two different styles of gyms. Mm. Um, Life Cycle's got your conventional sort of gym, weights and cardio on level one, then we do a bunch of group training upstairs, yeah. and then over at Elab at Maroubra we've uh, teamed up with some physios and exercise physiologists and really looking at the sort of high performance end of movement and, mm. um, and you know, a bit of rehabilitation for people coming back from injuries. Plus, also the performance side, we've got some sponsored athletes on stage from Danny, one of the young surfers, and Lizzie Wellborn, and yeah, we get a few of the other athletes in their training, just sort of trying to improve their movement patterns and help them achieve success in their desired sports. Mm. Do you know, I walk by that studio every single day, and I had no idea what it was. On your way to Domino's Pizza? I hope not. <laughs> no, my Bikram Yoga is uh, at Baba Yoga right there. And it I, is next I, door, I, almost. It's, it's a beautiful studio. Yeah, it is. It's good. It's um. It's been going, we've been open for a year now and the results we're seeing over there are pretty incredible yeah, okay. with, uh, with some people. So yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of a, a different style. It's, you know, it's bringing the best training modalities, a bit of Pilates, yoga, sort of some wellness stuff and then you know, your strength, your cardio, but just done in a controlled small group yeah. environment and the results we're getting are amazing. Are there, te- are there classes that you can go to? Or is yeah, it so we, we do classes. It's Sort of five, depending on which day, there's you know, sort of five to six classes a day, um, and again ranging from strength and conditioning, core, um, Pilates, wow. functional patterns, that sort of stuff. Well, Ryan, I didn't know that the conversation was going to start out this way, but I, I stopped doing my CrossFit because I no longer live in Germany and I've been looking for something to. Wow. to well, there you, there you go. Come on down. You've got a customer. Right? <laughs> no, there we go. go. That was easy. I, I, that was I've easy. been doing Liam's personal training uh, regime. I see you're brushing me already now. For, no, for someone else. Oh, oh, no, no, you're out, mate. You're out. I'm done. <laughs> you're out. Hey, if I'm done, I'm <laughs> no, glad that you're going to done. another person here. So it's all, it's all good. Never done. It's all good. It's all loving here in the studio. So why did I want to know why you chose to go down that path of going from uh, the group fitness style class that you're doing at Life Cycle and then choosing Maroubra. Uh, and going down the path of rehab. But did you choose that, that that demographic of that area, that that's what they needed, or was it just the space that you got, or do you think that? Yeah, it was just, um, it was a bit of a couple of things. Mark Mitchell, um, one of the other owners in the business, uh, owns Advanced Therapies, which is a physiotherapy business. Um, an incredible physio sort of practice that probably got some of the best physios I've ever seen, and, and we just, we work so closely with them that that's why we chose that area, um, that space came up and you know it just fitted well working right near Mark and, and the whole process is you know we check in on people that have an induction at the start, we know what injuries they've got, we know where they're at physically, mm. also what their goals are mm. and um, and we work closely with those guys so so that's one reason but we are looking you know to kind of grow it and you know, definitely that won't be the last either. Yeah well that, that's, that's the next question, it was uh, how, many, how many more do you want to just open up one one more a year or something? Or Not sure yet. I mean, the, the, the growth pattern, you know, like any business, you, you, you iron out a few creases at the start and um, we've sort of got some really, really good systems in place now which are really getting good results with people and, you know, everything from movement and rehabilitation to weight loss, aesthetics, everything's coming through and, and we're getting good results. So, yeah, it's just a matter of seeing what space has come up and, you know, there's only so many hours in the day, but we're, we're doing our best to sort of get some get some more going and really reach out to everyone and, and get everyone training their best. And do you think that you would 
uh, amalgamate the two different ones, or do you do you enjoy keeping the separation of the the group fitness style within life cycle and then the, the controlled in, in yeah, the lab? I think there, there's definitely a market for both. You know, like it's uh, the, the the movements we use up at life cycle and the types of sessions they're you know they're pretty intense and they're uh, they get they get great results again for fitness aesthetics wise, you know, strength, all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, there's definitely people that you know, have restrictions in their movement, but also just want to educate themselves. And that's what eLab does. We, we do educate a lot over there and we have seminars and members are sort of open to us at any stage. They can kind of get any information they want out of us. And, and it's all about just trying to improve people. So yeah, they are two different styles of gyms, but both sort of, you know, they both get good results. And I guess it depends what you want to be training for. Yeah, exactly right. Do you think that, you know, with the ever-growing trend of, CrossFit F45, is that why you think that, you know, these, these styles of training methods uh, out there, which is, you know, life cycle is a little bit similar, but you, is that why the eLab thing came about, because there's another need for... Yeah, you know, definitely. Um, you know, I think, you know, I don't, I don't like talking negatively against any types of training, because everyone's got their goals and everyone has reasons why they want to train, and different training styles mm. produce different results, but um, CrossFit, you know, see a fair few injuries come from it and I think it's pretty intense on the body yeah. um, and that's, you know, we get a lot of people coming to us uh, at Lifestyle and eLab that have done a lot of that and have injured themselves. Um, you know, if you're good at it, then it's then you're going to be good at it and you can probably do it injury free but people that kind of go in and try and throw heavy weights around without the right technique, it, it does uh, it tend to lead to a bit of injury and you know, I think life cycles, you know, we use a lot of functional movements and we use you know, a lot of still controlled, good exercises which teach technique, um, and then eLab is even more education over there, and, and we mix in Pilates with our strength sessions, and so you might be doing weights for 15 minutes, and you do Pilates for 20 minutes, and then some conditioning, so it's a, bringing the best training modalities all under one roof. Yeah, exactly right, and you know what, he's underestimated, him and Trent Langlands are underestimated in the, uh, in the health and fitness world, where they're not, they're starting to boom now and get recognised for the, the, the study that's gone into it because I used to train at life cycle. You know, when before I think before maybe when you just started being a business partner there. And they're always ahead of their time. You know, that I'm telling you right now, I I wouldn't train with many people in the eastern suburbs. I don't live in the eastern suburbs. Yeah. Myself as a trainer for 11 years, yeah. I wouldn't train with many people apart from these guys. So, can I ask the e lab, do you have to be re rehabilitated to go there? No, nah, not at all. Like, we've got elite athletes that come and they just like our program. Yeah. It's just um, the way we sort of train is we're really encouraging people to look after their body and go for longevity in their training and whatever sport they choose. And we've got a range of people from 18 year old athletes that are at the top of the Iron Woman series, Lizzie and you know, Sage is a great young surfer from down here. You know, my dad trains there. He's in his 60s. I exactly how old he is. But he's in his 60s and he's still killing it. Yeah. Um, so we just, it's just smaller groups and it's tailor-made and the people that are in there are also at the top of their game. You know, it's, we only employ really, really good trainers, physios, exercise physiologists, that sort of stuff. So the training, the level of the trainer is right up there and then, you know, the level of program that comes out of that and everything's tailored if we know someone's got an injury then we'll tailor their sessions purely for them so with the athlete thing all right so you're you're also an athlete yourself well well technically not but i'll give anything a crack <laughs> what's happening right now you got you you're doing uh because i'm looking out at this beautiful ocean seeing people paddle out there and you're talking about being an athlete and I know that you've got something coming up soon. Yeah, is we, that right? What's, yeah, what's I do. Uh, heading off to Hawaii in four weeks. How um, close? Yeah, terrifyingly close. Yeah, it's, uh, okay. So on the 30th of July, we'll be paddling from Molokai across the channel to Oahu. So it's a 53 kilometer paddle race. So pretty much on your, on your guts or on your knees, just using your arms. And wow. that'll take anywhere from, you know, Six to eight hours, hopefully closer to six. Yeah. But uh, yeah. And are you doing this on your own, or is there a team? No, that I'm doing it. I'll be doing it competing solo. But there are five of us from the lifeguards: myself, Reedy, uh, Harry's, Corey Oliver, and Juliana um, are all heading over individually to compete. So it's been great. We've been training for a few months now, and it's just uh, you know. 
getting a bit cold in the mornings though. It's getting on the harbour when it's dark and seven degrees isn't isn't ideal. But it's uh, you know we're having fun and we're learning about ourselves and learning how to push ourselves in a sport yeah. that we'd never done sort of any distance training at. And we teamed up with uh, Diabetes Australia. We did an Ironman about five years ago down in Melbourne, and, and we raised money and awareness for autistic kids. And um, and this time we've de teamed up with Diabetes Australia to raise awareness for childhood obesity. Mm. And uh, we're filming a documentary, which we've been traveling around the country, um, doing kids active camps. So going and doing free sessions for kids on a Saturday morning. We did one some in Perth, Gold Coast, Sydney, um, Adelaide. And then we're looking at a few other locations later in the year. So that's been a really rewarding thing for me, getting kids out, teaching them a little bit about nutrition and teaching them to sort of set goals and to be active. and. And that's what the whole thing is. We sort of started at Reedy, myself and, and the other guys, as this Question Your Impossible project. Mm. Um, and we're just trying to get kids to think that nothing's impossible. You know, if you set little goals, you'll be able to achieve big ones. And that's that's what we sort of did. We set goals of starting at 10Ks and our main, our big goal's 53, and I'm pretty far from that, but we'll give it a crack in a month's time. Yeah. Well, we should give a call out to you when you're in Hawaii, and, you know, because this is broadcasting over the internet. So we should be uh, yep. supporting him on the day. And yeah, that'll be the day for yeah, sure. It'll be, whatever, it'll be the day, the day before or whatever. So yeah, definitely. I'll, yeah, need all the, right. I'll need all the well wishes and support I can get, I mean. <laughs> so do you think that it's uh, important right now that that's something that's close to your heart, just targeting uh, kids with obesity as, a, as like a method for, of awareness now? Would you, is this something that's going to be permanent in the future? Or are you going to change once again, or is this that set thing? No, nah, this, this sort of, you know, QII project that we came up with, um, it's something that I want to keep going, and this isn't the only challenge that I'll set for myself, or I know Reed is keen, we've got a few other things in mind, and it's, um, you know, they don't always have to be big, hard, athletic things, we can set some other goals, you know, we've been talking to kids about academic goals at school, and just trying to improve a little bit here and there, and so they get to be a better person or a better student. Um, as they go, so the project itself's got a long way, um, long way to go, and we're going to be, you know, behind it for, for as long as we can. And for me, childhood obesity is pretty, you know, it's a close subject. I've got two kids of my own, and you know, I definitely want to see them grow up healthy and active. And unfortunately, we do see a lot of obese children around these days, and it's getting worse and worse with the amount of sugar that kids are eating and the diets. Yeah. That are available now and um, you know it's about getting out to these kids and, and trying to help them learn more about it and get it before it gets too late you know the amount of diabetes that's around now is, is through the roof and also just the the impact negative impact it can have on people's mental states when they're unhappy with how they look or unhappy with how they feel and you know get out and be active is the best form of you know, mental clearing for me yeah. um, that I've ever come across. So whether it's surfing or having a run or whatever, you can always sort of get away and do your own thing and you know clears the head. So hopefully we can get get some kids and, and adults. You know, it doesn't have to just be kids, but you know I think the next generation coming through have, have been probably let down a little bit by nutritional guidelines and and also their parents. And I'll, I'll call parents out on that. And it's not you know a little kid doesn't have the knowledge to make the right decisions but a parent does everything he needs available to obtain on the internet now and and all that so it's you know it is up to the parents to be able to put the right food in the house and to get the kids eating the right stuff and not just feed them rubbish to keep them quiet yeah exactly right. i do have a point on that have you seen the the movie what the hell no it's a, it's an excellent movie and i think that um every every parent should watch it but uh, along the lines of what you're saying it's the decisions of the parents that need to be considered, but I don't think parents even know uh, what's going on in the health uh, in the health industry. Um, you know, you go to the, the supermarket and you buy cold cuts and you buy you know uh, food from the grocery store and you think that this food is healthy, and in, in reality, it's not. No. All the most 80% of the food that we are consuming is um, filled with um, chemicals that are creating uh, obesity and diabetes and cancer and. Um, so I, I was just going to ask, when you are talking to these kids with obesity, obviously physical activity is a huge, huge part of it, but so is diet, yeah. and the right kind of diet. Yeah, that's it. And I mean, big companies are the kings of marketing, and, and they're putting, you know, what used to be in a big colourful box is now in like a brown cardboard looking box, and it looks organic, and people that don't <laughs> sort of either know how to read the packaging on the back or don't have a good understanding of what 
what they're eating or what they're feeding their kids would think that it's healthy because the packet looks healthy. And, and that's, you know, that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to raise awareness about what foods to certainly avoid um, and then, you know, what foods that you should be trying to introduce into your diet and just keeping everything in moderation. I mean, we're not trying to tell kids they're never going to eat a chocolate or they're never going to have a lolly again. That's, that's a treat food. Yeah, yeah. but I, I mean, I'm going to eat that again, you know, but it's eating it once or, you know, once a week or twice a week, not 10 or 15 times a week. I, I, I say to my daughter that there's healthy chocolate out there and then there's bad chocolate. Dark chocolate, you know, 70% cocoa, it's still chocolate, it still tastes really good and it's healthy for you. Healthy, healthy, yeah. So yeah. I always let her have that, you know? Yeah, I think that, yeah. Sorry, I, find yeah. I find like dark chocolate as well. You don't need to eat as much of it. No. no you can just have like squares. one or two oh. squares and you get your little fix. Yes. Whereas a, a milk, you know, a milk chocolate. Way, you have, you have a family, I have a family block. Yeah, I've been easy. having a family block before. Easy. But I think that people with awareness, because I've, I've done a, a marketing diploma, I spent a year just doing just doing marketing, focusing on marketing, and there's so much science behind marketing in general in terms of business terms, and that's what companies are using in their favour in the in all parts. So people started to understand the marketing side of things rather than actually the, the food itself, then we would have an understanding of what we should or shouldn't eat. Because you know, I've got an example, I think some companies would put on the on a packet light, you know, as in light like I think it's a spell it um L I T E L I T E which was which was that doesn't mean it's light and fat, light and sugar, light and anything. it just means it's lighter in weight. Like is in that whole yeah. content, like lighter in nutrients, lighter in nutrients, <laughs> like lighter didn't doesn't say, but then our minds think light. Oh, it associates with that. That's a marketing term, so we pick it up and eat it. So does that make sense? Yeah, and it's, and it's also like no, sh you know, sugar free this or you know low fat this. Sometimes they're the worst option. Hundred percent. You know because what they put in it to make it taste good is yeah. just as bad as as what was in it to start the sugar or whatever. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it comes down to that, and I think you know the government needs to take up, take a bit of a stand on it too. And mm. um, you know, there's there's people out there calling for sugar taxes and stuff like that. And I think it's I think it's a good thing because yeah. it's cheaper to go and get junk food than it is to go and get good food. Yeah, and we gro we can grow the good. Food. And maybe for one dollar. Yeah. I want <laughs> Um, so we're out close to the time though, so wait, you do you do have your ra um, your training today. I do. What time do you have to get out of here? Mate, we've got a bit of time left, so oh, we've got, a, we've got yeah. anything yeah. else we, we want to talk about. Talk. But well, we'll be floating around the harbour for a few hours. So go see Rivet uh, outside the Opry House again. I saw that photo. Was it you or Reedy that I saw the photo of? Uh, well, we've been up there a bunch of times so far. So I think this, today we're going to look at uh, starting at Rose Bay and heading up past Cockatoo Island and head right up there. Hopefully, don't bump into any bull sharks. And, it's yeah. freezing though. Is the water cold? The water's actually pretty nice. Really? Once you get going and you're paddling, it's it's okay. alright. But yeah, we'll be looking to try and punch out a few hours, maybe 25k today. What do you do in turn? Like, do you talk to each other, or are you just in the zone? Like, Reedy doesn't shut up, no matter where yeah. you are. So <laughs> you just listen. But uh, now nah, it's uh, where you know we just kind of paddle along, and we're not we're not going at, at race pace, as you'd say, we're just trying to punch out some Ks and get the arms moving. So, yeah, we have a chat and a laugh, and, you know, it's actually sort of opened me up. I've seen more in the harbour, more of the harbour in the last sort of month or two than I've seen in my other 33 years of yeah, living. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, uh, it's been great. I've experienced some cool things, and we've had some some really fun times out on the water. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this afternoon. It's a crack a day here in Sydney, day. and yeah. ready to go. <laughs> Um, it freaks me out. It freaks me out going past the uh, <laughs> the shore break. God, but that's, that's that's my. So gorgeous. It's such that, a that must be my day. English heritage, though. Yeah, I was yeah, born in England. That's so. And you'll get burnt if you go. Out, get, if yeah. you go out the back and back, you'll be burnt. You've got to stay close. And keep reapplying the sunscreen. I think I was freaked out one time. I, I thought it was you, but I think it was actually Rob Bruns that came in to save me. I was actually in, in at Bronnie. We grew up around Bronnie. Yeah. You were probably lifeguarding at the time. And it was probably yesterday. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was um I was at Bronnie. And Went out with Ben Saylor, yeah, and I had a bo uh, bodyboard, and I didn't have any flippers. First time out in the bodyboard, went straight out the back. Saylor took me out to uh, 
what is it behind the board? Yeah, it? bunnies out there. Bunnies out. Yeah. I was at, right out in the back of bunnies and it was like four foot. Probably a foot, but it, you sound like life. You sound like every other English backpacker that's yeah. turned up. <laughs> Your brother used to do that, just go out and get stuck in the rip as get well. Stuck in the rip as Shout well. out to Johnny Zolo if yeah. he's listening. Johnny Zolo, he, he will be listening, I think. He better be. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, I was actually caught out there though mm. for like a good half an hour. Ben Saylor went back in and left me, left me by myself and then I, Rob Bruns had to come grab me. Saw me struggling out the back there, so Aww. probably a bit freaked out. You know, ever since, ever since then, that's probably why I don't go past hip. Yeah, hip day. But um, you know, like it, it's one of those things. It's you know, I've sort of spent my whole life in the ocean, and I I'm, I do know what's mm. swimming below me. But we're on you know twelve foot long boards, and hopefully we don't look that tasty. Um, yeah. But yeah, you, you definitely think about it, whether I'm surfing or swimming laps of the bay or paddling. Um, you know, I find when we're paddling, we're you can end up a couple of K out to sea, so yeah, yeah you definitely, I'm not going to say it doesn't cross my mind, but um, I'm not, I, you know, it's sort of one of those things that you're probably more likely to get hit by a car on the way to training than yeah. you by a shark <laughs> while you're out there. You'd be freaked out if you were further north though as well, where I was living in Yamba, I mean, that's like, yeah. that's uh, around there, Ballina and that. What's going on with that though? Why is it, why are there so many shark attacks up there in that in that present time? My brother lives up there, by the way, Sheena. Sorry? In Lennox Head. In oh Ballina, yeah, that's Bay. right, is that where your mom Sharks is? everywhere. Yeah, yeah, so there's sharks everywhere. Yeah. People are just getting bitten yeah. left, right and center. Yeah, so yeah. what yeah. is it? I don't know why there's, you know, I mean, there's probably a, there is probably a reason for it, but Hello, there's, you know, are, are swimming in the ocean. Yeah, well, that's why we're getting bitten. But, but the amount of sharks up there has just gone through the roof. And, yeah. and lately, like, yeah. my, like my brother did that for about five years, and in the last year and a half, it just seems to be like yeah. shark attack in the same spot after yeah. shark attack. But my brother had a theory. I don't know if he's one of his full crap theories. One of his other theories. <laughs> <laughs> he said that there's a whale that they that that crossed up on the shore and they dug it into the sand and that the, something creeped uh, the yeah, seeps out seeps yeah, right. up. so um, yeah I don't know, I don't I don't know, know if that's, that's true or not I don't know if anyone can really put it down to, to mm-hmm. anything I mean maybe you know, fishing you know we're getting rid of a lot of the fish up there a lot of um, you know probably less fuel, you know, food sources for sharks so maybe they're coming in further to, to chase more fish or you know currents you know climate Global warming's in, you know, definitely messing with the water temperatures yeah. at different times of the year. Plus, whale migrations, that part of the coast sticks out. You know, Byron's kind of the most eastern part of Australia, so yeah. the whales probably get a little closer to the coast up there, and, you know, maybe that's that's one thing, but, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't know why they're there. I wish they weren't. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it is. We, we go into their playground, so we've got to put up with the fact <laughs> that there's a chance you're going to get bitten. Exactly right. So, so you're gonna you're gonna train for like two hours. You're gonna be exhausted when you come out of the water. You're gonna be cold. You're gonna dry yourself off. What's the first thing that you're gonna do? Like, are you gonna eat? Probably eat. Um, what do you eat? Just depends. I don't know. I've, I don't know what's on the menu for dinner tonight. Well, there's a lot of burgers out there. <laughs> no, definitely not no, that. No, but is definitely there like a staple food that you love to go to after you do a hard workout like this? Um, not really. Like we eat while we train. Like I'll eat before I go, and then okay. we take a bunch of um sort of nutrient. Nutritional, nutritional supplements, sort of things while we're out there, gels and whilst you're out the water, yeah, just like them in your pocket. They're just little things, and you can just like yeah. little gels. You don't you can throw suck the plastic down. away. In nah, the keep them in your pocket. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, you kind of, I mean, you, you finish we'll probably paddle for three hours this afternoon, and you know if you keep your fluids up and yeah. a few gels while you're training, and um, you know you get, you get out, you're hungry, but you just eat like normal. Yeah. Maybe just put a couple of extra portions on. <laughs> And just a random question. I don't know why. I just this popped up for me. I'm just thinking about the Bronny scenario. Why do you think? Uh, I'm not trying to come from an ego standpoint here, but why do you think there's so many successful people in that group of mates at your age that just came out of that group? Do you think that you all laid each other on as kids or something? Because yeah. like my brother, my brother's like really good friends with Weep, and that crew just seems to be. Like a very successful crew in their own right. Is are it? they all um, surfers or are they all well, different, different, different? Yeah, everyone's kind of doing different things. But I think you Can know when you. Ask you how, how old are you? I'm 34. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. Keep going. I uh, I think you know every um, every group of mates, whether it's from Bronny or from different beaches. You know, I mean, there's some of my most successful mates are from Maroubra. Um, but you know, we grew up as a as a group, and as soon as I think you see one of your mates start doing well, you kind of want to yeah. emulate that and you look up to them and, 
and that's sort of I guess what drives you to, to do something good you know in your own field you know like obviously we've had some really good surfers come out of Bronny and for a place that's got pretty bad waves in general mm. um, like Tommy Whitaker, Luke Hitchings, Rod Kerr like there's always been a good staple list of somewhat you know like those guys were fully professional surfers for a, a decade at a time so um, you know that and I guess you know those couple of really young good footy players Brendan McKinnon and mm. um, a few of those guys there's some good young surfers coming through but in the water everyone tries to push themselves but then on land you know like some of the best carpenters I know and chippies and have got really successful businesses and you know plumbers or whatever like everyone I mean you've got to be doing something right to be able to live in the eastern suburbs these yeah. days um, so I think that's it everyone's got to be driven a bit by money exactly right Bronny is that Bronte? Bronte, Bronte yeah. okay Bronte, guys yeah. I have a Bronte. corner when you, <laughs> if you live there for long enough you just drop the T and yeah. it turns yeah. into Bronte, Bronte. Okay. <laughs> so you've been born and raised in this eastern yeah. suburbs okay yeah. born and raised in Bronte so <laughs> Yeah, it's good. We've got this awesome house, the family home on the on the hill there, uh, at the uh, southern southern end of Bronny. Yeah. yeah, so it was a pretty perfect place to grow up. We had a really good, really good community spirit down there, and like the local board riders club does great things now, which I'm a part of. For yeah. you know, we've got a great group of young kids down there now that are you know surfing a lot, and um, you know the board riders kind of helps give them a bit of direction and, and gives them something to do on a weekend and. I think it's just always the older guys really look out for the younger guys yeah. down there, so it's, it's always been a, a good place to grow up. You didn't you didn't have to worry too much, and we yeah. could get up to a bit of mischief. And <laughs> so the kids probably get caught more now. But is there still more is still grom abuse going around there? So yeah, a little bit. I copped a bit of grom abuse. Yeah, yeah. I well, you hung out on the clock at the <laughs> wrong end of the beach. Um, <laughs> but yeah, grom abuse is at every beach, you know. Like it's a rite of passage for kids growing up, and mm. for older guys that have been there for a while, you know, it's not. It's certainly toned down a lot, I think, at every beach now yeah. compared to what it used to be. People used to get locked in gutters and stuff. Yeah, like that. locked in cages yeah. and locked in cages. strip nude and all strip these things. Nude. That if Where you did that, <laughs> if you did that, you'd be in a lot of trouble these days. But yeah, I think it. I think it shows. I think there should be more of it. You know, like it kind of teaches kids respect for your elders and also respect for your beach. You know, yeah, like exactly if, right. if you just get down there and they treat it like rubbish, then they'll get treated like rubbish. And I think yeah. that's a good way to sort of teach kids and it's not their parents doing it which is I think is a blessing for the parents because yeah. I'm pretty sure when my kids grow up they'll listen to the older boys down the beach more than they will me. Yeah. <laughs> How old are your children? I've got a four year old and one's about to turn two. Oh yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I, I dare say we'll be going one more. Going one more? Yeah. So you're oh creating a tribe. Yeah, it's Dude. good fun. It's good. It's uh, always, you know, keeps you busy but I just think of the good times that you get out of having them and yeah. that's yeah. what you do. Three's a good good number too. Yeah. Be able to hang out with each other. Like you can do what you want to do. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so it's two boys though, isn't it? Yeah, I've got two boys yeah, now. Two boys. Yeah. Little John. Uh, sorry, I was going to say little John because we've got my dad John as well. <laughs> Johnny Zolo just had a baby as well. He did, he did. He did. He had his second boy, so that was good. I, you know, sent some pictures. I didn't realise, as an uncle, for the last five years, what he'd been doing with his name as a theme. I didn't have a clue what he was doing until he brought out Tex. So his first baby's Philo. Can you figure it out? Philo's the first baby's name. The second one's Nash. And the third one's Tex. Can you figure out what those three names are? They're, they're, they're cities in the US. Exactly right. I'm like, have you ever been to the US, John? He goes, no. Nah. I'm like, why are you naming your kids after cities in America that you've never been to before? Mate, he's only been to Italy once and he got that tattooed on his foot, so... Can we move on to something a little bit more important, please? Yeah, 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 yeah no worries. We'll, we'll bring it back, we'll bring it back. Don't worry about it, it's all good. I was thinking about this this morning. You know what would motivate me? Is if there was a, a, a website where there were real hot men that helped train you, because that would motivate me to get up in the morning. What, and, a man, you, so you want hot men training you? Well, you got a hot man. No, no, a hot single right, man. A hot single man. Hot single man. Okay. Yeah, you 